Green's death may have been inspired by Conan Doyle himself. It seems as though Green's death was supposed to spark the confusion and debate it ultimately did. The back and forth narrative surrounding his death is difficult to follow, but it also resembles the type of story told by the deceased's hero Conan Doyle. In one of Conan Doyle's last Sherlock Holmes stories, the problem of Thor Bridge, a jealous wife stages her own death to make it look like murder. The wife framed the woman she believed was the object of her husband's affections and the source of her misery. Perhaps Green's misery was similar, and he wanted to make a statement with his death. Or perhaps he was as mad as the woman Conan Doyle wrote about. Even some of Green's friends have come around to the idea he carried out the perfect murder on himself. John Gibson recently asserted he was wrong about the murder, claiming his friend staged the whole thing. He created the perfect mystery. After the auction took place in May 2004, it was revealed the British Library had actually acquired many of the letters in Jean's collection. All of Green's worry, and even his death, was for nothing he would have had access to the information he so desperately wanted to see. Green was found garroted, which he probably couldn't have done to himself. When the police arrived at Green's house, they broke down the door to get inside. They found Green dead on his bed with a cord wrapped around his neck. There, in the midst of Sherlock Holmes' books and posters, Green had been garroted. Green's death was ruled a suicide by the coroner, but there's been widespread speculation about how he could have garroted himself. Usually, if someone tries to strangle themselves, he or she passes out before death occurs. Green freaked out when Conan Doyle's papers went to auction in 2004. Green wanted to find the papers so he could write a biography of Conan Doyle. He continued to search for Conan Doyle's papers, learning his descendants double-crossed each other left and right. Eventually, he found a way to inquire about them through Conan Doyle's youngest daughter, Jean. Jean was a strong-willed and imposing woman, having been an officer in the Royal Air Force, and honored in 1963 as a dame commander of the Order of the British Empire. When Green arrived at her doorstep in the early 1990s, the two got along quite well, and she showed him some papers in a box she said she would be giving to the British Library in London. Green was excited by the prospect because, according to Jean, a family dispute prevented her from letting him read them then and there. After Jean died in 1997, two different wills were found, and the papers ended up back in the hands of distant relatives, and, eventually, going to auction or so Green thought. A batch of Conan Doyle's papers did go to auction in 2004, but they may not have been the works Green had discussed with Jean. According to the Christie's auction house, the papers they had in their possession were from Adrian Conan Doyle's widow, Anna. When Conan Doyle's son died attempting to sell his father's papers, it lent credits to the idea of the Arthur Conan Doyle curse. As Green researched his Conan Doyle bibliography, he learned there were a set of papers held by the author's son in Switzerland. Conan Doyle had five children and his son, Adrian, was supposed to possess the papers in his safe. Adrian got greedy, however, and took some in the hopes of selling them to collectors. In the middle of his scheme, Adrian died of a heart attack and the papers disappeared. Because Conan Doyle had been so outspoken about the deaths of Bertram Fletcher Robinson and George Herbert, 
the fifth Earl of Carnarvon, he claimed they both died of an Egyptian curse after having come into contact with mummies his son's death was seen by some as quite the coincidence. Had Conan Doyle cursed himself and his own artifacts with his ideas about spiritualism, was anyone who touched those hidden papers destined to meet a death similar to the Earl of Carnarvon? Green was obsessed with Conan Doyle. Green, a native of Bivington, Cheshire, was considered one of the world's most notable scholars on Conan Doyle and Sherlock Holmes, in part because of his extensive collection. Green began collecting items associated with Conan Doyle and Holmes as a child. He had books, letters, papers, television and movie posters and memorabilia, and pretty much anything else he could find that had to do with the author and his famous character. Green also wrote about Conan Doyle and Sherlock Holmes, publishing over 200 works, including a definitive Conan Doyle bibliography. He was a member of several groups dedicated to Conan Doyle and Holmes, too, and served as chairman of the Sherlock Holmes Society of London from 1996 to 1999. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.